All right, all right, all right. We are live. Welcome in, everyone. Who do we have here? We've got Psy Deathful, Trans Girl Jade, Quinn, Admiral Paco. Uh, and I think that's it. Okay. Today, I don't have a lot planned. I have some movie reviews to do. And I was also going to play some Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor. But if you've been reading chat, you might have discovered that I'm running into an issue. I was try I was actually going to play uh, Fallen Order first before I even get into the movie reviews. But the EA app is actually not letting me launch anything right now. So I'm troubleshooting that. But while I'm working on that, uh, why don't I go ahead and say uh, I'll be reviewing this week. Um, Drive Away Dolls, Land of Bad. Perfect Days, El Conde, and Robot Dreams. And then those last three films are uh, Oscar-nominated films, and that actually only leaves two more. Now, that doesn't include any of the uh, animated shorts or live-action shorts or any of the documentary stuff. Uh, tracking down all of the shorts was like, basically, I would have had to have found like the one showing at an indie theater several weeks ago to see them all so i don't think i'll be able to get all of that but if i can't get this jedi Sur jedi fallen order jedi survivor thing working here in the next few minutes um i will just find a different game to play um but give me a minute i am let's see I want to, I'm, I, I, because other people have had this problem. So, what the problem is here, actually, why don't I show you? Oh, also, I realized I don't have my background music played. Okay, so if I go to desktop capture, I've got EA here. I try to open it and failed to launch game an error on our end caused the launch to fail try again a little later so that's the issue that i'm running into and it's not just for fallen order i tried jedi survivor i tried spore which i also have installed it's getting the same error on all of them so um i'm seeing other people have had similar issues so what i need to do is see if i can just launch from the um the, directly from the files so give me a second here. Because I saw somebody else who had the problem with this exact app. So. Give me a second. Hey, I think I got it going. Okay. Perfect. Give me a second. Move it to the correct monitor. Come on. There we go. Perfect. Okay. I just had to launch directly from the uh, the file. So I might just have to do that with uh, uh, Survivor as well. And I don't know what that means for, like, say, file syncing or anything like that because I'm not launching through the game launcher. But, you know, I did it old school. I looked up the EXE and just launched that directly instead of using a game launcher. <laughs> Tab in. Okay. Admiral Paco says, no tech expert here, but seems like an issue on the EA app. And yeah, it is. It's an EA uh, launcher issue. And uh, even though I bought it through Steam because it is an EA title, if I try to launch it through Steam, Steam like loads up the EA launcher to get it. But if I just open the EXE itself, seems like it's OK. Also, uh, hi, q -Reem. How is it going? OK, I do believe. That this is it i think the only thing i have left to do in this save is the fortress inquisitorius
now just one second just double checking let me make sure i've got the audio okay 50 percent stereo speakers good let's do it Oh, you just started a new job, Quinn? Yeah, I uh, I definitely know. The first day of a new job is like, ugh, why am I doing this? My body's not accustomed to this. My feet hurt. Hey, Marina, how's it going? Oh, you know what? Hang on. I just realized you're not getting the game audio. Sorry about that. Uh, and I'm playing with my mind to no controller. You're correct. Let's fix all of that. Okay. I think that the, the game audio is an issue of uh, me launching from a different... Uh, here. Let me... Boom. Okay, there we should have game audio. One of your arms will do nicely. There we go. What? Don't be so serious. Join me up front. Sisters. Mother, lend me your strength. Sisters, mother, lend me your strength. Fun scuffed way to start stream today. Oh, we got it working. Whatever she's doing, it's working. What do you think the odds are? My money's on you, kid. He has a very big head. Let's go, buddy. Once we're inside, I'll engage their defense level and then sabotage their sensors so the mantis can extract us. You find the Hulk run. Shall we stick together? I feel the pull. The lives of every child on that list are at stake. Whatever happens in there and whatever you see, don't worry about me. Just. Get it and get out. Close it on the fortress. It's time. <laughs> I'm in a pod. I'm a pod person. Hey, we saw that place in the Kenobi show. Yeah, I actually played this before the Kenobi show came out, so I was just like, when they were like, oh, we're gonna go to the Fortress Inquisitor, so I'm like, hey, that's the place from the game. And they look pretty, pretty similar. Was I? Yeah, I was tapped out. Okay. It's a full screen windowed game, but like 
it does cursor capture. So if I'm clicked out of the window, my controller doesn't, uh, it doesn't accept my controller. So you just binge watched the Kenobi show yesterday. Nice. Well, then you should remember this place. Shoot at me. Come on. Cal, you there? Yeah. It's good to hear your voice here. I've located the holocron. Sending you the location now. Got it. We're on the move. Let's get it. Okay. Ooh, you got something for me? Lice. These guys are actually pretty easy to take down. Okay, I guess the big droid is gone now. Oh, more. You sure about... Oh, shit. Now he's gone. We caught him. You can't be out. I think I just did. What's next? More dudes. Time to fight. He's too scared. Get in here. Okay, he gone. Shoot me again. Oh, how dare you! Oh, oh, good. Ah, you cornered me. Do not corner me. Come on. Okay, he's gone. The Empire created the Inquisitors. Okay, he's gone. Trilla to the dark side. Let's tear it down, BD1. Okay. Area, but the Empire sealed me in. Any idea? Oh, hang on. I just had a sound come from a program that I want to mute. Okay. Oop. 
also I need to tab back over. Hey. Right. Yes. Cal, look for a control room. I've got a plan. I think I'm standing in one. And plug you in. And let's blow you up. Whoa. See that BD? Let's check it out. Hey, out the box. How's it going? I've disabled the shields on the outer sections of the fortress. Flood the base and swim to the central keep. That's a hell of a plan. We'll meet up inside. Good luck. Got it. Let's go, BD. Ooh, looks like I did damage to the place. Section looks pretty weak. Ready for a swim, BD? Hang on. I'm trying to remember. Did Kenobi also flood a section of the Inqu Fortress Inquisitorius? It's been a while since I watched that show, but I seem to remember that was something that he did. But I could just be remembering Cal doing it in this game. Paco, since you just watched it, you can probably. That is a lot of drowned troopers. Up here? Yeah, up here. Come on. I just blew up R2. Okay, I think... Is this the gauntlet room? No. He's gone. Got them. BD, where are you running? Oh, door slicer. Lock door. Need BD one. This. Jesus. Need assist. Come, let me end you. There we go. One of them's gone. shooting. Okay, knocked a couple of them. I think that should blow him up. There we go. Okay. There. 
now the astromech is gone. I wasn't sure what he was going to do, but I didn't want him wandering around, potentially making things worse for me, you know? He did nothing. Oh god. Ow. Okay, now we've got our own guy. I'm getting over here. Stop him. You won't defeat us. Letting him escape. Fight me, Jedi. I'm going to destroy you. Can't touch them all. All right. Oh, and I got a skill point, too. Oh, and a save point. So let's put you down. And meditate. And I think... Yeah, none of my skill points uh, are single points. So, nothing to get here. We'll see if we get another skill point before the end of this. But that was... A fun little gauntlet. Now I think next up. It's locked. What do you think? Yeah, is this whole thing? You. No, I want lock on you. Okay, that guy's gone. Now I can just deflect all these blasters. Come on. You sure about that? That's the last of them. Sweet. That wasn't too bad at all. behind a blast door. Look for a console nearby. Found it. Seer, I think you're using the dark side. That was impressive. How you holding up? Don't worry about me. We have a job to do. Still, it feels good to tear this place apart. This prison is where they kept us. I only wish there was someone left to save. I'm sorry we had to come back here. So am I. But we didn't really have a choice, did we? I understand. Let's keep moving. Yes. Let's get this over with. Any sign of Trilla? No, not yet. The holocron is being kept in the interrogation chamber. It's the most secure place in this entire fortress. I'm opening the path to the holocron. Get to the holocron. I'll divert reinforcements and join you as soon as I can. Okay. Going this way. Looks like a turbo lift. Might be your ticket out of here. Guys, what do you think? Is this a long walkway to a boss fight? How's that feel? Hey, Dragon Eye Dragonborn, how's it going? Close. BD1. Thanks for being my friend. Never 
seen anything like this. Advanced, even for the Empire. Yeah, mostly a boss coming. That's definitely how it feels. We broke them, beat them down, and turned them to the dark side. All right. So no more skills to get, but that's okay. I got all the skills that I need. Okay, just checking to make sure that I am on single blade for now. See what's behind here. Although I might switch to double blade at some point if I... Actually, let's go for double blade for now. Yeah. Gee, it's like it's a boss fight. Hey, Trilla. Holy shit, that hurt. Okay, that did some damage. Oh shit, wrong button. Oh shit. Ow, ow, ow. Don't kill me. Another. Ow. Dorstim. Okay. Okay. Trilla. Phase two. I saw what you've been through. You've experienced great suffering. It's not too late to let it go. Let go? I'm stronger now because of the pain. I knew you'd come back for this. No, thank you. You'll never make it out of this place alive! You can't escape. Oh, shit. I was dodging that. Nina says... You sure about that? You're not doing too well. Oh, shit. No, I was dodging. Oh, shit. Well, I died. Which means I lose skill points, but who cares? Like, I'm, this is the final fight, so... And I've got all the skills that I want, anyway. Alright.
Ow. Ow. Get back Oh my god, he had me cornered. Oh, okay. Toss me one BD. Oh shit. Stay still. You paid for that. Know your place. Out. This is the end, Padawan. Oh, I think we're close to the end here. Now, this is usually a button mash, but I turned all those off. Hey, thank you so much for the $10, blub blub. Oh, oh shit. I think I did it. I beat her. Yay. Cal. <laughs> All right. I have the hawk run. I need to do this. The boss is indeed a goth mommy, Marina. It's over, Trilla. Nothing. Is ever truly over. This fight is over. I know the darkness that is eating you up inside, and every day we choose to either feed it or fight it. It's too late. Oh, also, hi, Public Loser. How's it going? No, it's not. I know the choices that I made. Hey, Fat Knight. Took all your choices away, and I have failed you, Trilla. I failed you. And I am so very sorry. And says, "OMG, is she gonna die?" Well, no spoilers. Watch the watch the story play out. I've carried so much hate for you. Oh. Uh oh.
the fuck did he teleport? How did he teleport there? Beanie, get him! Oh, shit! I actually stabbed him. Hey, D Spencer, how's it going? Surrender the holocron. No. I'll never give it to you. We shall see. Ow! Ow! Don't worry. Side injuries are not that harmful. You only have some vital organs there. I won't let you take those two. Hey, she's alive! Oof. Such hatred. You would have made an excellent inquisitor. She's stronger than that. <sighs> No, no. Fight gives you force unleashed. Yeah, I understand that. Strong with the dark side. I can feel it inside of her. No. Hey, listen to me. Still have a choice. Don't do it. Use the light. Don't go to the dark. Ray shields. How did this happen? We're smarter than this. Great Jedi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be a great Jedi for sure. Well, yeah, lightsabers always cauterize wounds unless they don't. Vader's fighting style is just brute force and throwing stuff. He has no technique like Dooku had. Well. Uh, a big part of that is just Anakin was so damaged in the battle, in the duel on Mustafar, that, uh, like, he mostly just has to rely on his force power at that point. Um, because he can't really run or anything like that. Like, he's got a robot body. Hey. Hey, kid. Cow. Cow. Yeah, more machine than man. So he lost a lot of the finesse that he had when he was Anakin. You too. You did it. Did it. Oh, we did. Careful. Where are they? Well, they're out there. Whoa, hold on. Wait a minute. Oof. Uh, oh. Sorry. They're definitely gonna... They're going to set something up between Cal and Marin in the sequel, I can tell. This one wouldn't leave your side. Thank you. Hey. It's a good point, Eddie Spencer. Hey. So now what? Well, Captain... This is the end of my charter. Your contract has been fulfilled. Thank you, Grease. Well, if it's all the same to you, I was thinking that maybe I would stick around here and take you wherever you gotta go. Besides, the kid kinda looks up to me. What about that? Well, you... To rebuild the Jedi Order. Yeah, except I got a vision on that one. What happens if I use it? The next generation of Jedi. The Empire will be after them. Just like they're after us. The lives of every child on that list will be forever changed. Not by us. Their destiny should be trusted to the Force. Now, a horror view of this so game go. would be that I wasted my entire time with this because, like, the only reason the Empire got that holocron 
is because of me seeking out the holocron. They never would have been able to get it from that temple without my work. But that that ignores the character work that goes into uh, having Cal reestablish his connection with the Force and become the Jedi that he was never able to uh, finish becoming before the Purge. So it's not just about, you know, what happens to the Holocron. Like, yes, the Holocron, if he had never gotten it, the Empire would have never got their hands on it. But the Empire wasn't able to extract that information before we got it back and destroyed it. And now Cal is one with the Force. So, uh, you know, and plus there's a, there's more stories to tell with him. So um, on initial reading, I was just like, wait, if you're going to destroy it, why did you seek it out in the first place? But, you know, there's there's more to it than that. It's the, the, the journey is more important than the destination, you know? Yeah. Herder let the force aside. Well, the thing about that, Eddie Spencer, is that, like, when I went to get the holocron from the temple, I was given a vision of what would happen if I used it. Of the Empire hunting down all of these children because I am using them to build a new Jedi Order. And it would result in me being captured and turned into an Inquisitor. So, like, <laughs> it was actually the correct decision to, uh, to destroy the holocron. Yeah, it, it is a common trope, Quinn. Anyway, that was uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Um, now, let me switch back over into non-gaming mode because we got some movie reviews to do. I also need to start recording because I wasn't recording the VOD before this. Also, I'm not sure. Did I have ads on for any of that? Just checking. No. Okay, cool. I will turn ads on after I do the reviews because I don't like ads interrupting like, you know, scheduled segments. But if it's just gameplay, it's whatever. So give me a sec. Getting some water. All right. By the way, we have uh, 15 current viewers, but only 10 likes. So if you haven't liked the stream yet, go ahead and do that. Every time people like the stream, uh, it boosts it in the algorithm and it helps me get more people in. And we're going to be playing some Jedi Fallen, or sorry, not Jedi Fallen, or Jedi Survivor in a little bit. But first, I've got some movies to review. And why don't I begin with Drive Away Dolls is a... Um, comedy of errors film that when I was watching it, I was sitting there going, this comes across like a knockoff Coen Brothers movie. And then the credits came and I found that it was directed by Ethan Coen, but Joel Coen had no involvement. In it. And I'm like, oh, okay. So, so Joel must have the magic. Um, I, I know Joel Coen just solo directed a Macbeth adaptation in 2021. And I might, I'd be curious to see how that, how that one is. Um, because everything I've seen from the Coen brothers has been them together, but now they're kind of branching off into solo works, and I think Ethan's missing something on, on his own. Um, but it has all of the, the traditional, you know, Coen brothers, like, tropes of, of the, the quirky characters with, uh, funny conversations and stuff like that, but, um, I would actually compare this movie, uh, to Burn After Reading, which uh, was, uh, you know, another Coen Brothers movie about a whole bunch of comedy of errors surrounding a MacGuffin. And I think what this movie misses that that movie had was that all of its happenstance and funny coincidences all served to make things harder for the characters. Whereas in this movie, we have uh, the the two main characters basically... not having any actual like obstacles to overcome every time something comes up to get in their way something outside their control happens to get them out of it and like i i don't have a problem with contrivance in stories so long as that contrivance isn't there to help the main characters but to hinder them and it just it just felt like the main characters were just kind of there along for the ride the whole movie without having anything actually challenging them. And so um, the movie's set in like 1999. It follows a couple of lesbians on a uh, on a road trip down to Tallahassee, but it turns out that they took a car that has some, uh, you know, some MacGuffin, some, some contraband in the trunk. And then so there's a couple of uh, goons chasing after them. And uh, 
a bunch of, you know, it, like I said, it feels like a knockoff Coen Brothers movie. Um, the cast is full of pretty good actors, but I, I, they're, they're given really underdeveloped characters, and it's kind of built on the hope that you like all of the, the quirkiness that each character has. But, like, a lot of that work in the script kind of is, like, hedging its bets that all of the actors are going to be charming, and charm is a little in short supply in this film. Um, the main character uh, has, like, this really bad Texas accent. Uh, just, I, like, I just kind of wanted to describe her as, like, a lesbian Sandy Cheeks. Um, and uh, it's really grating throughout the movie. Um, I don't know. Uh, it also came across like a movie about lesbians directed by a straight man. <laughs> so, you know, it, it it didn't feel very queer in its queer representation. So I don't know how well I could recommend you seeing this one, uh, especially because like for a story about a couple of lesbians, uh, on a road trip on the run. I don't know. I've seen a trailer for um, uh, Love Lies Bleeding, and uh, that movie's coming out in a couple weeks here. And uh, if I wanted to see a movie about lesbians on the run on the road, I would just wait for that one, because the trailer for that one has me really sold. Uh, if you really want to see what it looks like when the Coen brothers have half their brother tied behind their back, here's the result. Land of Bad is a military action movie starring Liam Hemsworth and Russell Crowe. And I gotta say, Russell Crowe, he's really entering his John Goodman phase. Like, I could have totally seen his character be played by John Goodman like 20 years ago. Um, but he plays a um, a drone operator, so he's like on a on an Air Force base. You know, he just sits down in front of a computer to run ops and everything like that. But Liam Hemsworth plays a, a JTAC who's Basically, they're, they're the on-the-ground coordinator for all this stuff. But he's also kind of green. He hasn't seen a lot of action. He's usually just the one calling out uh, intel to the drone operators and stuff like that. But it's a movie about a, uh, an operation that goes bad and his team gets wiped out. And so it's just him having to, you know, contend with uh, uh, being in hostile territory and... Uh, Russell Crowe's character on on the line with him, and Russell Crowe's character is kind of this very interesting, like, uh, he's a very particular uh, kind of a person who is a little grating to everyone around him, and like he's when you look at like he's Russell Crowe's age, and so you would expect somebody like him to be like a general, but he's still a captain because he's been so acerbic. He's kind of been, uh, you know, uh, he hasn't really advanced, um, and so he's kind of that kind of a. a I, I, I almost wanted to say he was, like, autistic. Coded? I don't know if he was autistic, intended to be, but that's kind of how his character came across. But I, I actually thought Russell Crowe's character was probably the best thing in this. Liam Hemsworth's character just feels like... Okay, here's here's a... Uh, uh, here Here's a soldier who's kind of green, and then the rest of his team gets wiped out, so he's got to, you know, bend for himself. And it's Liam Hemsworth doing a Liam Hemsworth character. It's fine. I did like his character's arc, though, because at the beginning of the movie, he's talking about how with the increased technology that the, the military has, how it's like taking the barbar barbarism out of war, which another guy just tells him, like, nah, come on, that's just, it, it's distancing you from it, but like war is barbarism and you can't get away from that. And the film kind of hammers that message home because as the film progresses he starts losing more and more of his technology till the end he's like literally killing people with rocks <laughs> so um this is one of the first times i can remember seeing a military movie that really treats the military as a job more than anything uh it's not glamorized there's like intra-office and inter-service bickering and the film never really questions why the U.S. is involved in boots on the ground operations in countries we aren't at war with, because it's set, it's set in the Philippines and we're not at war with the Philippines. Um, but it doesn't portray like the military organization as like blameless and uh, upstanding. But that also might just be because the film is from like a, a has kind of an individualistic bent. Like it's the main characters who succeed despite the inefficient bureaucracy and and the uncaring 
uh, other members of the military, you know, it, one of those kind of stories. Um, I, uh, I actually, I, I really liked it. I thought the action in this movie was pretty good. I just, you know, I always have to keep in the back of my mind what's the, uh, the motivation for any movie that is, uh, you know, uh, has the U.S. military as, like, the good guys in it because basically all of these movies are made with Pentagon funding and so there are certain things that, you know, the Pentagon says, hey, we want you to portray us in this this way and uh, so I have to be aware of any, like, you know, uh, propagandistic bents in the film. Um, but just in on terms of the technical level and some of the story themes, I, I actually thought it was, a, it was a pretty good movie. If you want to watch an action movie, you, it's pretty good. Perfect Days is a Japanese movie that has been nominated for uh, the Academy Award for Best International Feature. And a couple of reviews ago, I was complaining about how basically every Oscar movie these days feels like it's just, you know, uh, misery. And uh, this movie was such a delight. Um, this is a beautiful film. It's just a little slice of life story about a guy who cleans toil public toilets in Tokyo um, and it's just his day-to-day -day life uh, and his simple pleasures of listening to cassette tapes and doing um, film photography and, and uh, it showcases some of the cool uh, uh, public restrooms around Tokyo. There's like places where they've got the, the glass walls that turn opaque when you lock the door uh, and uh, some cool like uh, woodcut decor and some of the other restaurant uh, restrooms and stuff like that. Um, there's not like uh, uh, there's some plot in the story, but it really is more of just kind of a vibes movie. Uh, it's you know there there's some ups and downs in it, but it's like you know your your day to day ups and downs. Like oh my coworker just up and quit on me, so now I have to cover for him and work late and. Uh, or, you know, my niece shows up at my apartment so unexpectedly because she ran away from home. So I'm taking care of her for a couple days. You know, little things like that. But it's a very sweet movie. The main character, he almost never talks. In fact, like his co-worker jokes that uh, he doesn't even know his voice. But uh, really good cinematography in the film. We're seeing a lot of things just through his eyes as he's just kind of appreciating the casual beauty around him. He does people watching and stuff. And honestly... Uh, it, it, the movie's just a real vibe. It has a really good um, soundtrack, which is uh, almost entirely, you know, um, American music for a Japanese movie. I thought that was interesting, but it's kind of just, it's his cassette uh, collection, and it's a lot of songs from, like, the 70s and 80s. Um, it was just, it was a really beautiful movie. I uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. If you just want to have a good time for two hours, if you just want to watch, you know, just a little slice of life thing with some uh, good visuals and just honestly, if I could say probably one of my favorite stories, uh, little stories running through this movie is that uh, early on, he finds a piece of paper tucked away in a crack in one of the restrooms and he opens it up and it's a tic-tac-toe game with uh one circle in it already and at first he just tosses it but then he's like no you know what somebody left that there to play a game so he decides to play the game and so as the movie goes on day to day he goes goes back and checks and sure enough once he's left his things they leave another circle and so as the movie goes on he just plays a game of tic-tac-toe and it's a really cute thing um yeah, I it's it's nothing complex about the movie. It's just a very very sweet movie. Uh, it's called Perfect Days. Uh, obviously, it's not perfect. Like like <laughs> he does have you know uh, troubles in his life. Um, but it was it was nice and simple. I I, uh, I I would recommend this one if you're having a bad day. Just watch this one. It'll cheer you up. El Conde is a Chilean film about how Pinochet is a 250-year-old vampire. And it's been nominated for Best Cinematography at the Oscars, which is the only reason I watched this thing. And I gotta say, I did not enjoy this movie at all. And 
if this film is going to be nominated for Best Cinematography as a black and white film, then it should be denied the win. It's not lit well enough for black and white. And many of the darker scenes lack proper contrast. Also, because this is a Chilean film, there's some assumed cultural knowledge about Pinochet that I simply do not have offhand. And so there's probably a lot of satire around him that I missed. Uh, but the film was far more just like odd than it was funny. I, I think there was some stuff that was lost in translation there. Also, Marina, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Uh, you're welcome for the stream and movie reviews. I'm happy to do them. Um, speaking of translation for, for this movie, uh, please be warned, if Netflix is going to default to the English dub, horrible. Do not watch the English dub. I started with the English dub and very quickly realized how badly the English performances match the, the actual acting on screen. There's uh, just it, you know, watch it in the original Spanish. Um... The film is billed as a black comedy, but I I really didn't find a lot of moments where I was just outright laughing. It was more just like a kind of a, a quirky thing about, you know, uh, here's this uh, old vampire who's kind of sick of living and uh, the, the way that and like he's already faked his death as Pinochet. Um, and it's set like a year after that. But here it's his family like squabbling over the inheritance while he's. They all know he's a vampire and uh, dealing with stuff like his his wife has been waiting 60 years for him to turn her and he never does. And there's like the Catholic Church has sent a nun to investigate him and try to kill him and uh, all sorts of stuff. And like, I don't know. Um, there is a fun twist that I don't want to give away. Um but there is the narrator in the film is speaking in english the whole time and there that is explained later in the film uh as a as a surprise character um which is i would say probably one of the funnier things in it but because it is like a, a late addition to it I, if you're going to watch it I, I'll, I'll save that one for you um but then it's kind of one of the only really redeeming aspects of the movie, but it's kind of a big spoiler. So I can't, I'm, I'm not going to spoil it for you. Uh, if you do happen to watch it, just, you know, there, there is something at the end there, but honestly, this movie was a slog to get through. I only watched it because it was nominated for an Oscar. I wouldn't recommend you see it. It's, it's just, it's not that great. Robot dreams is a, uh, Spanish and French produced animated film that has been nominated for Best Animated Feature at the Oscars. And if you haven't heard of this before, if you haven't seen it in the theaters, uh, it's because it's like not even getting a U.S. release until uh, after the Oscars. I don't know why they did that. Um, but I happened to get a hold of it. So... This is an adorable animated film about a dog and his robot best friend set in the 1980s New York City. Uh, it's all like anthropomorphic animals, so it's not like a, a, a human's pet who befriends a dog. It's a lonely dog living, living in New York City who orders a robot and they become best friends. And it's a series of vignettes. Uh, the whole movie has no dialogue in it. It's all just, you know... Uh, it's all unspoken, um, which really, I think, will help uh, uh, the, the the broad appeal. You can, you know, play it in pretty much anywhere with minimal localization. You only need to change some, like, uh, important, like, on-screen text. Uh, but it was a really cute movie um, that... Uh, it starts out very simple and you might be fooled into thinking it's going to be a very sweet, carefree film just about a robot and a dog having fun together. But it actually uh, gets kind of uh, melancholic and sad at points um, and it has a pretty bittersweet ending. Uh, I was as I started this movie, I was just like, oh, just like perfect days. Here we go. Here we've got another just really happy, just really nice uh, Oscars movie. Glad to see it. But this one does hit you in the feels. Um, 
it's still a wholesome cartoon about a dog and a robot, but just don't get blindsided going into it like uh, I'm sure a, a lot of people. Uh, it's not as bad as getting blindsided by like Up, but it's kind of in that category. Um, so just be aware. But uh, the animation is beautiful, very cute, uh, very cutesy. The vibes are very 1980s, late 1980s uh, New York City. It just, it, it's it's a fun movie. Um, the robot is a very adorable character. Uh, the dog, you just want him to have friends. And uh, I don't think this is going to beat out uh, like uh, Spider-Verse uh, for the win, but... I think this is a worthy entry into Best Animated Feature, and I'm just, I'm genuinely surprised that it didn't get an earlier US release. But hopefully, uh, with the uh, added attention to the, uh, to it at the Oscars, when it actually gets a US release, you know, may maybe more people will go see it. Um, I would definitely recommend it. It was very cute. And with that, Stop recording. Okay, I've got all of my movie reviews in. Now, I had problems launching uh, my uh, my Jedi games, so let's see if I can launch Jedi Survivor without it uh, failing on me. Don't, don't you fuck me over. Yeah, okay, I'm getting a failed to launch game. Which is a, here, let me show you. So, uh, other people have had this issue. Like, it's a known issue where, where like, the EA launcher is uh, causing people to, to run into this. But I am... I'm looking at the uh, the files to see if there's an EXE that I can run that isn't going to use the um, the launcher. That it's your game and the launcher in the same place. I, I don't think that's it because it's not just like see, okay. Watch, I try open Spore. I get the same thing. Open Jedi Survivor. Same thing. Fall in order. Same thing. So, what's going on here? Is EA broken? Yeah, I don't know. Um,. Here, let me... Jedi Survivor... I'm, I'm gonna see if somebody has a solution for this, just for Jedi Survivor, because the solution that I had... That got me to finish Fallen Order... Uh did not, um, it wasn't a solution that I could use for this game. So, yeah, let me at least exit the client and relaunch that. Now let me tr restart it. Happening for all your games is an issue with the launcher. Yeah, yeah, I, I know it's an issue with the launcher. It's just that for Jedi Fallen Order, I was able to just find a specific um, uh, EXE that I could just launch to play it there. You know, I did recently.
Huh. I have an idea. Oh, you know what? I bet I know what it is. I this was my plan for today Ooh. I was going to play you know uh, Jedi Survivor I was excited I had just beat it I had just beat Fallen Order and I was going to play Survivor today and of course the freaking app is deciding to you know suck on me and I hope I got this Ugh, I'm almost wondering god I don't want to have to restart my computer because if I restart my computer, I don't know if that'll end the broadcast. Um, it'll take and it would take a couple minutes, and I'm sure I'd lose some viewers. I just don't know what else I can do to get this going. Maybe I'll just have to play a different game, and I'll have to just play Jedi Survivor on uh, on Monday. It sucks that I have to wait that long, but yeah, maybe I'll just play a different game. Let's see what else could I play today. Yeah, I know. It's a tech support game. I know. Sorry, it's a scu scuffed stream because of that. I was not expecting this. I hadn't, you know, I only discovered this issue literally like I started stream and then I was like, oh, well, I'm going to play uh, Fallen Order first. So let me start that up. And that's when I discovered the issue <laughs> and I was troubleshooting it the entire 10 minutes that I had pre-stream going. Um, what can I play in the meantime? What would be a good one to play? I'm just looking through my games. Oh, you know what? There's an idea. So... Several months ago, I was playing V6, which is that game where you uh, control your um, your gravity, and that's basically the one button that you play. And I actually recently discovered that there are uh, playable levels for it. So, why don't I try that here? First things first... Give me a second. Yeah, let's play some V6, and I think there are some custom levels, so... Let's just make sure the game audio is on the right program. Okay. Yeah, we got a lot. Okay, why don't we just play some of this stuff, then? This one's called 333333 Easy Mode, so we'll we'll start up Easy Mode because it's a, a warm-up game, you know? A strange force has teleported me and my friends into this strange dimension. I should investigate. At least it looks perfectly safe out there. That's a relief. Spikes! I knew it! Why every pocket dimension we discover seems to contain hundreds of razor-sharp spikes is beyond me. I've never told anyone this, but they terrify me. May consider them trivial since we just go back to the last checkpoint, but that split second I get a face full of spikes is nightmare fuel. <laughs> Be careful around here, eh? Oh, I missed the dialogue. Whatever. I just kind of want to play it. Wrong button. I don't... Which button? 
press... What button am I pressing to activate terminal? Oh, that was just a kill myself button. There we are. You're trapped in dimension 333333. That's 300... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or three for short. Cute. Wonder why I'm here. You're here to rescue your crewmates. Each is stranded in a different district of dimension 333333. When you found them all, maybe you'll be able to escape from here. Sai says this is the game you're playing when you first watched one of my streams. Nice! It's a very cute game. My friends are near. I hope I can see them soon. Wait a second. Did that computer just answer me in plain English? Of course, you fool. We have an uh, all ultra tech mod cons. We have all ultra tech mod cons you know. After all, we are the ones creating these pocket dimensions. I'm crafted to the finest specifications. Why'd you capture my friends? Because it's fun to watch you squirm? That's one reason, anyway. This is just an exercise in cruelty? Wah! No, child, but you're too simple to understand the bigger picture. Right now, philosophy is entirely academic. You have heroic deeds to attend to, such as rescuing your crewmates and collecting trinkets. You're right. I really should find those trinkets. And my crewmates, of course. Then perhaps we can work out a way to go home. Okay. Oops. Okay, you gotta time this right. Shoot. Shoot. Get that checkpoint. The green district is to the east, to the west lies the blue district, and the vaunted info desk. Info desk? Don't ask. You're currently in the relatively safe back streets of Dimension 3. Here there are less dangers. I like this place. But you can't stay here. You must find the four districts, each resonating on a different frequency and appearing as a different color. Within these, your crewmates are awaiting your rescue. Do not expect it to be a simple one, though. Don't worry, I got the skills to pay the bills. I mean, to rescue my friends. We haven't had bills since the advent of zero-point energy technology, obviously. It's just a turn of phrase. Hang on. Sorry, I'm checking some else. Okay. Are you quite finished? In the unlikely event of your victory in the four main districts, your way will be clear to rescue the final subjects and the test will be complete. Can we go home then? If I'm in a good mood, maybe. I wonder what this room is for. Hmm, maybe I could use it to practice with gravity lines. I reckon a gravity line expert could probably float in this room without touching the walls. Hope I never have to do that with spikes all around. That would all be evil. The bad kind of evil. up here because there's a checkpoint and then what is this heart that heart kills me what how does a heart kill you I twink it okay it doesn't want me to go through there shoot The barrier in the heart room can only be removed by collecting all of the trinkets in this dimension. Aha! More than... Not, note that there are none in the final zone and all are possible to collect without dying. The trinkets are not needed to escape, but is merely escaping enough to satisfy you. You must rescue four people to proceed beyond this point. Okie dokie. How do I get back? 
Checking heroism status. Access at nine. Come back later when you rescued four crewmates. Okay. Guess I'm going up then. Oh, shoot. Okay, this is all about timing. And about finicky controls. Hey! There we go, checkpoint. Oh, geez. Okay. That was rude. Okay, can't get through there. How am I supposed to get past this thing? Jeez. Oh. Ow. Okay, it's all about control. I have I can't go too far. Oh, son of a bitch! That caught me off guard. Rude. How is this game called easy? I keep dying. The stupid things. Don't transcribe books by hand when you can't read or write because of weed. I remember, uh... The first time I tried an edible was, like, when I was still just making videos on the channel but not running a live stream. And I figured... Oh, right, okay. I figured I could um, take an edible at like 6 p.m. and probably be fine by midnight <laughs> when I uh, had a new TV show to review. <laughs> Let me tell you, no, no, I, t I was not fine. <laughs> I did not expect it. I figured it would last like, ah, it'll last like four hours. It'll be fine. No, it did not last only four hours. <laughs> Disable inversion plane lock. Yes. Yes, it's blocking my path. All right. All right. Hey. Okay, I figured it out. I see. Oh, shit. How am I supposed to do this? Like that, okay. There we go. Disable inversion plane lock? Yes. There. Nothing happened. Did it not? Oh, sorry about that. 
Truth is, I'm just a lowly database terminal. I have dreams of gra greatness, opening locks, removing warp gates, maybe one day even destroying spikes or platforms, but these are just my lofty dreams. I'm sure you could do it if you tried. You look just like the same as the air of the terminal. And I traversed this dangerous pit of spikes just to get to you. You did? Yes! Oh, I will reach deep within. Perhaps I can overcome my negative programming with the knowledge that you believe in me. You can do it. You say the nicest things. I'll blank my screen to save CPU resources. Okay, here I go. Yay, you did it. Of course I did. I am a regular Intex interface terminal capable of anything that any other unit can do. I was just messing with you. Why would you do that? You're mean. <laughs> I have nothing to do. I'm hardly ever even used. I have to get my fun wherever I can. All right. Oh shit. Hopefully, I don't have to redo that whole thing. I have to redo that whole fucking thing? Are you kidding me? That sucks. Hopefully, I don't. Oh, son of a bit. Hopefully, I don't have to reread all of that dialogue. Okay, at least I don't have to reread all that. Son of a bitch! This whole section sucks. Oops. Problem with this game is that the controls are very loose. How is this called easy? <laughs> I worry about the other levels if this is an easy one. Yeah, see, I, I, taking that fault to... Yeah, like, I just have so much momentum, I have to be like this to move. Oh my god! I forget about it coming back down. Okay. Son of a bitch! That is some bullshit. Oh my god! Thousand ways to say hi to spikes. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm fluent in that language. Oh my god! God, it's just the spikes are everywhere. There's, it's so. So unforgiving.
Really? Oh my god. That's not what I wanted to do. I was pulling back. Why? Why am I getting worse at this? All right, have a good one, Paco. See you later. Oh, I also, you know what? I know what's wrong. Okay, now I'm gaming. My problem was, I was using telepathy. Now I've got the controller in my hand. Now I should do better. There we go. See? First time every time. <laughs> it's okay. It's content. Okay. Yes! Set points! We did it! We are here! Okay, how do I get past this one? Like that. Congratulations, you have found a shiny trinket. Two out of 20. Okay, now what's over here? A porter, okay. All right. Not a problem. This is not that difficult to get past. I should have probably talked to you. Proceed downward for an optional trinket challenge. Proceeds to the right to continue to the end of level. Throw yourself onto the razor sharp spikes for a healthy dose of dye. Hey, rude. Oh. That momentum. Now the platform gives you additional momentum that you might, oh, son of a bitch, not be expecting. That was weird. There we go. Okay, I know those hearts hurt.
Why do those hearts hurt? Whoever designed this game was heartbroken. <sighs> Too much momentum. That's not what I wanted to do. Hey, Rennie, how's it going? I don't know why being upside down makes it feel so much harder. Okay, we made it. Captain, over here! Finally, Vertigris, hold tight, I'll be right over. This place is weird. I don't even understand how I got here. I see a teleporter down to the right of you. Hopefully that will lead to safety. I was trying to reach it when I fell into this chamber, and then the gravity line switched on and trapped me. I'm sure I can disable that. Oh dear, okay. So, what I need to do... is this. Well, actually, I was thinking of coming out all this way and skipping right past Vertigris, rendering the uh, entire trip pointless. What do you think? Yeah. Simple wire end would have done. Don't let spikes hit you on the way out. Okay. Oops. Son of a bitch. There we go. I have found a lost crewmate. Now, how do I get out of here? Nope, I can't cross over that, so... That's not what I wanted to do. I have to ride that platform, but it moves quickly. Son of a bitch. Really? Why is it so hard to get out of here? There we go. Okay. Oh, hey! And it loops back over. Okay, now we're out of here. Where am I supposed to go? Hmm. Like that. I see. Okay. Nope. Where am I supposed to be going from here? No, I got it. There. But then how do I get... Oh, I see. Yeah, okay, that's a difficult one.
How did I get through that the first time? It's a pretty narrow passage. Yeah, because I need to get, like, through this section right here. Uh, so this game is not Star Wars. This is V6. Um, I was trying to play Jedi Survivor, but my EA launcher is not letting me launch any EA games for whatever reason. So I had to scrap that, but have this game. Figured I might as well play some of it. I beat the main game, but there's some uh, some bonus levels that I'm playing through right now. So that's what's going on. In fact, actually, why don't I change the title? There. Change it to video games instead of Star Wars. <laughs> No, I should gaslight people into thinking this is Star Wars. I mean, sure. God, this is a tight section. How the hell... Is this level pack labeled as easy? Hang on. Oh my god, really? All of that, and I could literally just get up here from there. I need the right momentum, but it's doable. Okay. Well then, it, well, if that's the case, then maybe that isn't the way I'm supposed to get up there. No, that can't be it. Hundreds of bugs have met their demise. You have defended democracy. What you been playing? Hell Divers 2. Oh! So, the game that people have been comparing to Starship Troopers? Okay. How? What the hell am I supposed to be doing here? Because, like, it seems like Whatever I do, I need to get down here, but it doesn't seem like I can drop through here and thread it. What I need to do is get on here somehow. How would I do that? Because if I can get up here, then I can jump from there and land here. Then I just need to center myself here and then thread through there then go up here, then go down there. So how do I get up here? That is the question. So not through there, that's for sure.
Hang on. Aha. Bingo. Got it. Boom. I'm out. Viridian will skid a small distance when told to stop from full speed. To make fine adjustments without skidding, you'll need to tap the direction as briefly as possible. This allows Viridian to make tiny adjustments to his position without being hampered by skidding. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Cool, I've got a map showing where I've been. Love it. Let's continue on this way. Sandy, thanks for following. Oh, this is just oops, credits. Okay, cool. We're going down. Can't get in there. A trinket! Software failure, oh no. I ran into that earlier when I tried to play a Jedi game. Um, okay, I don't think I can go that way. Trinket, but I can't get it from there. I have to go around like this. Oh, shit. I was not expecting to slip through like that. I got the trinket. Let's get this checkpoint first. Red zone. Never let the beams cross. Oh dear, those hot dogs hurt you. Ow. Okay, I know how to do this. Like that. Okay, uh, I don't think I can cl cross that. So let's go this way. I was trying, just trying to get a checkpoint. Quite rude. Son of a bitch. I just want a checkpoint. Oh, looks like I wanted to get here. God, timing that other jump. Oh, 
Okay. No! Son of a bitch! Oh my god. I can't fall down there, because then it'll all reset again. Son of a bitch. There we go. Okay. There. I'm through that. Possible mode unlocked. I see what I have to do. Okay, that's tricky. Should probably jump. Oof, that one's a little tighter than I thought it was gonna be. I need to be moving further over when I come back. There we go. Damn it! Okay, no, I do need to get this one done first. There we go. Okay. Got it. Made it. The info desk. I was told about that. get this trinket. It's just a matter of precision jumping. Oof. And also, once I land... There we go. That's okay. Trinkets, fortunately, save when you grab them. Damn. 
I have to... Oh my god. There we go. Checkpoint. Checkpoint. Oh my god, are you kidding me? This will be fun. There we go. Oh, I have to do the whole... Okay, we got the checkpoint. Flips. Let's... There we go. Grab that. Oh. Okay, I want to be up here. See, I have to wait for that one to come back. Oh, interesting. Okay, I see. I see how I have to do this one. You know what? This is actually kind of a cool one. So I think for this one, oops. Yeah, on the second platform, I need to actually run off its advancing edge. So I need to go now. Oh, yeah, that was right. I just, timing wasn't exact, but that is the direction I need to do it in. I'm also glad that there's some music in this game finally. I mean, on that one's gonna be tricky. Oof. For a precision platformer, this game really should give you less slippery controls, you know? Oh my god! I made it, but it was just... Go. 
Oof. Okay. We've made it to the last one. No! That was rude. No. Boom. Okay, I made it. Checkpoint? Checkpoint. Oops. Yay! And I can just die there and respawn here. Okay, cool. I don't care if I die after I get the trinket. Trinkets are good. Rude. I have to be careful. Oh. Thanks for the warning. Oh. Oh, shit. Okay, I see what I have to do. That's actually a very precise timing. There we go. It looks like the teleporter will lead right above you. Good to see you, Captain. What an interesting dimension this is. So much detail, so many interesting challenges. Yes, though if I never see another spike or mover killer blob, I'd be quite happy. I've been making notes on them. It seems the life forms are quite simple-minded, and although I think there's an overachieving... I don't care about this dialogue. I'm skipping. Ow. No! Oh my god. There we go. Checkpoint. Rude. That ending that's getting me. <laughs> I keep like forgetting. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be careening into that little spike thing there at the end. Oh my god, every single time. There we go. Okay. Checkpoint. Checkpoint. Good. Oh dear. How am I supposed to do this, then? That was a good first attempt, actually. Oof. Almost.
Oh, I was so close. Another checkpoint. Made it. Please be a checkpoint. Son of a bitch! Checkpoint. I feel like I'm just kind of spamming it through here to hoping I can like luck my way through one of these. It's like there's so much going on it's hard to even keep track of what I'm actually doing here. Oh that was almost there. Is this pong? Not quite. Oh, that was close. There's a teleporter right at the other end, so I think this is the last room that I actually have to clear in this section. really not a lot of waiting that you can do. You really do have to just go. But, like, these damn things. That was actually pretty good. Yes! Got it! Oh, you son of a... You son of a... I'm sorry. Fuck that. What the fuck was that? 
Are you kidding me? That is just bad game design. That is just shitty level design. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, that's actually evil level design. That's not like, ooh, you gotta react quick. No, that is literally just fuck you. Yeah, like, no, whoever whoever decided to throw that in there, like, you think you're... No, I'm sorry, that's... Fuck you. I have lost, actually, a lot of respect for the person who made this mod purely because of that. Okay, gotta go... Oh my god, I can't actually even go all the way over to the left. It's a precision landing! Are you shitting me? It's a precision fucking landing that it doesn't give you any time to anticipate. What the fuck is this? This is some bullshit. Yeah, this is really bad level design. Holy shit. Oh yeah, it is absolutely sadism. You can't even call it, like, a... It's not, like, even a troll level. Like, it's just... Oh, Jesus. It's one of those I want to be the guys in arrows. Yeah, like, they call this a fucking easy... Like, the calling this an easy level pack, that was, that was a troll. Yeah, I, I'm sure I'll get it. It's just, I gotta... Brute force through this again. And then, like, remember to go left, but not too left. There we go. Okay. There we go. Third try. Okay. Checkpoint. Whew. Man, this level's bitch. Fuck this level designer. Okay. Now, yeah, okay, so I've already been here, so I just need to head back out. Okay, red zone is done. Rude. All right, what do you got for me? Over a lake of chaos on the path to the doctor, a leap that beckons the smitten. Curiosity, not martyrdom, will reveal its treasure. Blue zone. Hang on, what's the what's down here? I don't know. I'm gonna go to the blue zone. Because the blue zone sounds like there's going to be a dude or something to rescue. Wink it. Ow. How do I get through all that? Okay. Damn, that's slippery. Have a good night, public loser.
There we go. Oh, come on! I'm sorry, this level hack is just mean. Look at all that precision shit I gotta do. Really makes you earn those checkpoints. Checkpoint got. Okay. How am I? How am I supposed to get past all of that? Okay. No, seriously, how am I supposed to get past this? It almost feels like I'm supposed to come from here. It doesn't feel like this is... That's doable. That's very tight, but that's doable. Incredibly tight. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm I I just have to go at the right time. Yeah, it's very tight. Bingo. Checkpoint. Okay. a trinket on that other side, but oh, I don't know if it's worth trying. Oh, wait. I see what I have to do. Okay. Yeah. And I don't want to hit those platforms. That's interesting. Platforms you do not want to hit. Okay. There we go. Oh, son of a bitch. On Monday, I will definitely have uh, troubleshooted my uh, EA launcher issues. Hopefully, it's uh, not a thing where I have to reinstall any games. I assume it's, I would probably just need to reinstall the EA launcher itself. Okay. We've made it. <sighs> I got a trinket. And I don't even care that it killed me. No. Okay, so I can't go. Yeah, this is what I have to do. Okay. And a new checkpoint. How about that? Okay, that wasn't too bad. A couple of trinkets down here to grab somewhere. There we go. 
Auf. There's several trinkets in here. Okay. Okay, I can't brute force this to finesse it. Yay! Oof, that was just bad timing. Oh! There we go. These checkpoints are not very forgiving. There we go. Victoria! Captain, oh, it's terrible! You're safe now, I've come to save you. Can't move, those terrible spinning disks have me surrounded, and when I try to look away, all I see is endless wibbling zigzags everywhere. Then I feel sick. Stop. What you're seeing is a natural result of certain methods of space folding, Victoria. It's quite safe. Space what? Don't worry, I'm coming for you. There, I got her. Oh dear. So I have to return the, from whence I came. Okay. So I have to backtrack. This should be fun. Sudden switching and the, 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 the platform speeds, it's all thrown me off. Checkpoint. Ow. 
Oh god. Okay. I get through all through this. Do I need to get through like this? How the fuck am I supposed to get through here? There we go. Hmm. Okay, so I there's there's no way to get through that. Okay. Just check it. Backtracking is always fun. Oof. This is harder than the first time. You know, if you learn to duck, you could avoid a lot of problems. Actually, hang on. I want to search something. I'm just checking to see if there is a way to launch it without using the EA uh, launcher. Because I'm I'm just wanting to see if I if there's a way. Oops. I am. Tr I just moved my app to offline mode, and I want to see if that'll let me launch Jedi Survivor. Doesn't look like it. Damn. I'm almost wondering if, because I didn't run into this issue until I was using a VPN earlier. Sorry. I was just seeing if I could get Jedi Survivor to go. Because I am getting a little frustrated with this game. 
I really wanted to play some Survivor. I've been looking forward to playing that game for a while. I've been telling myself, no, you can't play offline. You, you gotta play on stream. It's told people you would. All right, cleared that. Son of a bitch. Okay, well, at least it's not as bad. Go away, hot dog. Stop hitting me. Stop hitting me, hot dogs. I forgot that that thing was there. Quite rude. Checkpoint. We got it out of here. Okay. And getting out looks like it's going to be a lot easier than getting in. Oops. Hang on. First, I want to grab you. Okay. But that trinket looks... Oops. Damn. I was thinking, saying, that trinket looks like it's easy enough to grab, but there we go. How do I get across here? Checkpoint. Trinket! Info desk, hello. Hells yeah, I be them info desk. I live for the giveification of information. I can say to you all things that are needing of knowing. You talk strangely, and you made me jump with that stupid flash. The green zone is subjectively found by humans of your era to be the easiest. It focuses on floor pieces that move around. You mean moving platforms? The purple district talks of the problems of company of love and hate and move and rage. It takes the densest population in the world of here. So has lots of creatures that could stand in my way. Red is color of place with inversion planes of plenty or gravity lines if you dislike techno sound and word. It is now coming quite difficult. Gravity lines, they make me dizzy. Hardest and hardness is zone of blue. Will impart blue feeling. Floors here house frequently a travel belt. Its entrance is also its exit. You may have to backtrack. 
After all four knocked over and people's collected, final area is calling for holiday of a lifetime and rescue a final human person. Hooray! Okay. Oops. Now, okay, so... Unfortunately, it doesn't look like this map has any teleporters to it. Oh, wait. Oh, I get you. Oh, I can't get you this way. All right. Trinket time. Okay, so I remember coming over here before. Okay, so we're back at the original area. Now, I know there was some stuff that was unlocked. Once I had, what, two? Is that up here? Oh, this is the final zone. Okay. What about up here? Did I do the green zone yet? I feel like I did the green zone. Maybe... I did the green zone. So... What about up here? Right, this is where, where with all the trinkets unlocked. Trinket. Entering the final zone, your instincts may be freeze with fear. Oops. Game. Fine. This was in an internet cafe before they built that stupid trinket monument. Blah, blah, blah. I don't care. I don't care about the lore. I want to play the game. Okay, so... Purple zone. How, how must I get to purple zone? I have to land on that thing. How am I supposed to do this? Because it's like the... Uh, 
I have to get there from another direction. So, if I'm right here, I need to get up and over through here, so... Is that all the way around? God, how, do I, how am I supposed to do this? Two crewmates remain. I've already been here. Huh. I don't know. I'm getting a little bored with this. Let's see if there's another game I want to play. Um. Honestly, I'm super bummed that uh, my EA thing just isn't working. Why don't I... See if I can uninstall and reinstall the EA launcher and see what that does. Oh, that was weird. Oh, there's a repair option. Let's try repair. Okay, I'm trying the repair installation. If this doesn't work, we'll uh, we'll see what we can do. But right now it says downloading stuff. So, because yeah, I really want to play Jedi Survivor. And if the repair installation works, then I'll be happy. Uninstall and reinstall should fix it 99% of the time, yeah. Also, hi, James Knight. Um, I don't know if you've got my message either on Patreon or in response on YouTube, but uh, that uh, movie that re you requested, I will get to that after the Oscars, because right now I've got to get uh, all of the Oscar stuff. So that will be coming. Okay, now. I've got it repaired. Now I'm going to try and launch Jedi Survivor. Failed to launch game. Okay, so I'm going to need to uninstall. Uninstall. Oh, I should probably... Once I've uninstalled that, then I will try to just launch it from the Steam uh, thing and see if that just has a EA launcher install or something. I have a whale. Okay. Alright, now that that's uninstalled, I'm going to try launching it from Steam and see what happens. It may end up being a thing where I have to, like, restart the computer, which I'd have to end stream for that. But, um, we'll see. All 
Oh, I also just saw you popped into uh, Discord. By the way, there is a... Um, uh, you can link your Patreon to your Discord account, and that should give you a nice green name in the Discord. Oh, you just said you tried the manual method of forcing Discord and Patreon to cooperate, so no avail. So give it 24 hours and see if it works itself out. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right. Okay, now, let's see. Is it launching the game now, or is it gonna... Failed to launch game. Okay. Well then, I will have to probably restart the computer and do some other stuff to get this. That is really disappointing. I'm wondering if it was like EA was doing some... Because like I never had this problem until like I, I used a VPN for something today. And um, I'm wondering if EA has some like stuff that's like detecting... Oh, you are using a VPN. We're going to disable uh, uh, your thing from working. You know? Anyway, yeah, I don't really have any other plans for today, so, um, and this game's kind of meh, so I, I know it's early, but let's see, is there anybody else streaming that I could send you to? I kind of want to get this troubleshooted. Um, I also have some editing to do and watching more stuff. What I'm going to do on Monday is I am going to finish all of my, um... I'm going to finish watching the rest of the Oscar movies, and then we're going to do my Oscar predictions. And Jedi Survivor, provided that, you know, I can get it working. Anyway, let's see. Anybody live? Alec Gunter is doing his 10,000 subscriber special, and he's playing Sonic Adventure 2. Awesome. Okay. Well then, why don't I send you off to him and tell him hi for me? And I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Goodbye.